Hi everybody, it's Annette from The Art of Intuition. And today we're gonna talk about our psychic abilities, what we would label as psychic, and why we can't see the lottery numbers. Why can we just see certain things? And why don't we have the ability to see those other things that we think we wanna see? And the key word is why we think we wanna see them. Now I can speak from my experience and my experience only. So for me, the more I expanded out, the more I had access to. Now, that does not mean I had access to the lottery numbers. It just means I could see more. Because if we raise our consciousness and body in our higher aspects, have all of the knowledge of those aspects and all the vision of those aspects, it could be very overwhelming for us in our human body on what we would be able to see. So I found for me, I grew into it. I started just being able to, to see and hear things that other people weren't seeing and hearing. You go into the, being a psychic, you know, you're labeled as a psychic. You go into being labeled as a medium because you can all of a sudden hear things on a frequency that other people aren't hearing. Doesn't mean they don't have the capability to do it, that everyone has the capability to do the same things. They just aren't, open to it and it's not their time to start their journey of doing it now some people go through the psychic stuff some people go to the medium stuff i went through all of it and then you go to a different space where you kind of understand everything is sort of an aspect of you, you understand you're just hearing different frequencies you tune into what you tune into if it feels appropriate to maybe go into to mediumship you'll do it if it feels appropriate to maybe look and psychic, really, you're just looking at different timelines. You kind of see that all the time on TV, especially I used to try in my beginnings, predict sporting events, the ending of what was going to happen in sporting events, or I dream about certain sporting events before they happened. And I'd write it down to see how close I was and what actually happened. Cause a lot of stuff in the beginning is very symbolic. They don't come out and say, okay, here's who's going to win. Here's a score. It's more symbolic, especially I would get a lot in the beginning when I'm dreaming, when I first started opening up. So it wouldn't be as straightforward as you would think it would be, or you'd want it to be. The human wants it to be easy. The soul doesn't speak in words like that. So you have to kind of learn the language of what's going on. And then it kind of becomes very straightforward, but it's still not in your normal human language, but you understand it. So it's easier in that sense. But I would try to predict sporting events and you see it all the time on TV where you'll see announcers say something. This hasn't happened in, if you're watching a football game, this hasn't, he hasn't missed a field goal in three years <laughs> and misses a field goal. And you're like, oh no, he jinxed him. How did that happen? He read the timeline. Subconsciously, he just read the timeline. That popped in his head, he said it, he read the timeline. It popped in somebody's head. He got the script and he read it, right? They're just reading the timeline. They're subconsciously picking up on the timeline of what's about to happen. And I found I could do that when watching different things. Like I knew, oh, they're about to get an interception and it would happen like right like that. Cause it's kind of instantaneous in a sense because the timelines will shift. Like you can predict something's gonna happen and remember, there's really no time, it's just vibration. The vibration shifts and the timeline shift. It's not like there's one set thing that's gonna happen. There's not one set of lottery numbers. There's a zillion lottery combinations, a zillion timelines on what's gonna happen, a zillion collectives that are playing into these things. And what's highest line for you is going to happen organically. It's not gonna happen, you don't have to sit there and meditate on lottery numbers. If you're meant to win the lottery, you're gonna win the lottery. It's really that simple. It might not be your time to do that, or it might not be in your timeline to do that because that's not what you were supposed to do. If you were supposed to do that, you would do that. That might be what you're supposed to do. A lot of times our human can't really be trusted with a lot of money because we don't value money. We think money's for us. Money's for what I can do with it. I want money because of me. I want money because of my family. I want money because of this. That's not what money's about. Money is about the collective. It's about helping other people, not from a place of lack needing to help other people. In a sense, it's just, it's not just for you. So sometimes we don't get a lot of money until we value the money we have and we know what's to do with it, or we're just going to blow it anyway. So it doesn't matter. 
You can hit a timeline where you win the lottery and get hit by a bus the next day. It might not be the timeline you want. And there's zillions of them. So a lot of people will, will look at different, different psychics and say, well, they were, I've been, they were wrong. This didn't happen or this didn't happen. You shift a timeline. They're only going to give you the strongest timeline in that moment. You shift the timeline, someone else shifts the timeline and none of it happens. It's really more in the moment. So I talk a lot about making your decision in the moment on what's going to happen because that's when you're the clearest in a sense, because in that moment, you can see the timeline very clearly about how that energy is going to take you somewhere. And the more you expand and the more you grow, the more you can see more. You can see more of all of your timelines and other people's timelines. You can see how a lot of things are going to end for people. But it's not your place to say that because that's not, they need those experiences. They need those timelines. Some timelines you see when you get to a certain space and you just want to avoid the whole thing. You're like, I don't really need to see any of that. I've done all that before. I'm going to go do something else. A lot of times we'll go to different people if we want some guidance on something because when it's your own stuff, you have all the emotion in the way. Once you clear a lot of emotion about your own stuff, you'll see you can see a lot more of your stuff and a lot more of everybody else's stuff, but especially your stuff. You go to other people because you can't, you can't see anything when you're emotionally clouded. You have to drop the, drop the emotion, clear the emotion for you, and then you can see a lot more. The emotion holds us back in a sense to what we can see and what we're able to do. That's what's important is to clear the emotion. Then you can see more of your own stuff. And there's still some times when I'm clearing emotion about something, but I really feel like it's time for me to, I have to act on something, but I have a lot of emotion going on about it. And then sometimes I'll pull my own tarot just to kind of get something that it's still me. It's just me not clogged up with the emotion about it. Or I'll go outside and just ask for a sign. I'll ask for two different things. One thing happens, one thing, another thing happens, there's my answer and I go with it. But you'll find the more you expand, the more you grow, the more you can see. And the more you're entrusted really with seeing because a human can't be trusted with anything. I mean, think about it. If you were a psychic that you always discovered your power and a lot of it too is we want to feel special because we never felt special so okay now we're psychic now we're medium now we can tune into these frequencies other people can't tune into let me go be in that braggy moment for a while and now i know the lottery numbers <laughs> and then we're all going to be in that energy for a while and some people never move out of that space or it takes them a long time to move out of it other people kind of get in it move out because then you don't want the hierarchy where everyone comes to you because they think they know you know things they don't know which isn't really true. You have more access to things. They just haven't gained the access yet. It doesn't mean they don't have the ability to, but you're already kind of pedestaling everything. Like, oh, I know more than you do. Like you'll see all the time, different videos. Oh, this is the most important thing you're ever gonna hear. No, no, it's not. It's not the most important thing I'm ever gonna hear. <laughs> it might be important in that moment for me, but no, it's not the most important thing I'm ever gonna hear. <laughs> we have to kind of stop looking to other people for that stuff. But if we feel it's appropriate, sometimes we do do that. And that's, that's part of our journey. But just because you're not getting the lottery numbers or you'll see psychics, and I'll hear that all the time, well, if you're psychic, why don't you know the lottery numbers? Because the soul doesn't care about the lottery numbers unless you're supposed to do that. It's not important information. It's important to the human, it's not important to the soul. I'll have a lot of people say, you know, money makes me happy, but I've never known anyone where money really made them happy. It just makes it easier for them, but it never really made anybody happy. They're usually very unhappy in a sense. It depends on where they are, when they got it, how they got it, what they do with it and what they've done with themselves. All that is more important than the money itself. So don't focus so much on if you can see the lottery numbers. If you want to play the game, Play the game, see what you can see and predict. <laughs> see how close you are. Open up to when you're dreaming to see what you get in the dream state. That's how it started for me. Open up to what you can hear. Test yourselves. I used to, I worked for free for years just to test how I was getting the info to see how I would interpret it. Because when you're not charging people, they don't really expect much. <laughs> so you can kind of, <laughs> you can kind of run through what you can do and, oh, okay, I saw that, but it meant this, not that. 
sometimes we also want to extrapolate what it means. Like you might say, oh, I see coffee. You love coffee. That's our human put, putting a story to what we just saw. Coffee might have a, to you have to really go deeper sometimes. It might just not be that you're kind of trying to extrapolate a story that might not be there. Could be coffee's the name of the cat or their dog. <laughs> you just, you just want to kind of be in the moment of what you can see and don't be bogged down on what you can't see. Because some of the stuff you can't see is not important yet. You're not supposed to see it yet. So practice. Connect within, share the, shed the emotions, clear the emotions, see what you really can see, and keep practicing the art of intuition.